There's currently a lot of concern about refugees in Europe, but a less known fact is that during the past quarter century, there's been a much larger wave of migration within Europe, which has received less attention. Since the fall of the Berlin Wall in 1989, close to 18 million people have emigrated from countries in Eastern Europe to the more prosperous West. These emigrants are generally better educated and younger than the population they've left behind. The countries in Eastern Europe have been rapidly losing young and highly skilled people, which tend to be the most productive. This is complicating the process of closing the income gap with Western Europe. At the same time, migration from Eastern Europe adds to the challenges of rapidly aging population in these countries. To provide advice to deal with these challenges, we need to understand the drivers of such large migration flows, as well as their impact on economic growth and income convergence. Economic migration, driven by personal choice, is part of economic development. For migrants, the motivation behind moving westward is to find better jobs, improve living standards, and support their families back home by sending money. Differences in growth prospects, unemployment levels, and weaker institutions in the migrant's home country drive the young and more educated migrants to move west in search of better opportunities. And for the less skilled migrants, the availability of attractive welfare benefits in receiving countries plays a role in their decision to move. A new study by IMF staff suggests that this outflow of the younger and more educated workers from the East has made demographic trends worse and contributed to the shortage of skilled workers. This has had a direct impact on both growth and productivity. These findings are contrary to the widely held belief that migration is actually beneficial to Eastern European countries because it fosters income convergence, which eventually leads to a slowdown of East-West migration. The IMF study, however, argues that the East-West migration of the younger and more educated people has a negative effect on the home country and a positive one on the host country. For example, the host country is positively affected by the migrants who are highly educated and motivated, and those who are less educated contribute by providing services like affordable childcare, which allows women and others from the host population to go to work. On the other hand, the migrant's home country is negatively impacted by emigration because losing skilled workers lowers productivity and growth and reduces per capita income. This departure of the youngest and brightest workers makes the income gap levels larger in Eastern Europe and the process of catching up to the advanced West more challenging. In short, though East-West migration has been a boon for the EU as a whole, it has been less beneficial for Eastern European countries. Due to the income and institutional differences between the East and the West, the causes of emigration are likely to persist for some time. With this in mind, what should countries do to mitigate the negative effects on growth and income convergence due to the outflow of productive workers? Two types of policies could be considered. What the countries of Eastern Europe can do for themselves and what can be done at a pan-European level. These countries can strengthen economic policies, fortify protection of property rights, improve effectiveness of judicial systems, reduce red tape, and improve the quality of government services. All these changes would make it more attractive for people to stay in these countries and more attractive for people already abroad to return. Moreover, policies could also focus on leveraging the remaining workforce, for instance, by boosting labor force participation in particular for women and seniors, where it falls short of what is seen in some of the more advanced European countries. A reform of immigration policies might also be helpful. Given the positive impact of East-West migration on the EU as a whole, policies could also be considered at the pan-European level. Taking a forward-looking view, financial transfers from the EU, which are typically used to help member countries catch up economically, could be modified to help mitigate the negative impact of emigration on growth. <laughs>